This is Algebra 2 Lesson 10.4, Z-Values and Confidence Intervals. So a Z-value is the number of standard deviations from the mean. And we have a formula that we can calculate that for any data value. To get your z value, you would take your data value, subtract your mean, and then divide by the standard deviation. Um, this is your data value. This is your mean. And this is your standard deviation. As always, I like to backwards that formula, so maybe we know the z value and we're trying to figure out the data value. So if we want to get the data value, we would take that z value, undo this division by multiplying by the standard deviation, and then undo this subtraction by adding the mean. Confidence interval is kind of a longer one. It's going to have, starting with the mean, we will add and subtract. We're going to be getting two answers for an interval, a low value and a high value. The z-score times the standard deviation divided by the square root of n, n being the number in the population or data set. Um, so, I'm not going to rewrite it, but we got mean right here, we got standard deviation right here. Now your z-score is going to vary. Um, if you are trying to get a 68% confidence interval, that corresponds to a z-value of 1. And I'm going to tell you why. If we go back to 10.3, Hopefully you recall that these intervals here, this was 34% and 34%. And that's why if we add those together, we're getting 68% because that's 1 plus and 1 minus standard deviation. If we went all the way over here and added up these regions, this is 13 and a half and this is 13 and a half, we would get 95%. Uh, and then if we went over here, added up all these regions, added those extra 2.35s, we would get 99.7% of the data. But that's Z1, Z2, and Z3, depending on how confident you want to be. So I'm going to write those down. Z of 2, if we added up all of those percentages, we would get 95%. And Z of 3, if we added up all those percentages, we would get 99.7%. So what confidence interval says is you're going to do a couple trials, like for example you're training for a marathon, you're going to run a couple practice races, and you're going to keep track of your data, see how you're doing. You can use this formula to say, well on race day, I'm 95% confident that my final score is going to be between blank and blank. Or you're taking a couple practice tests, maybe the practice ACT. You can use this to get some practice scores and say, well, on official test day, I'm 68% sure that my score will be between blank and blank. So let's try some formulas in a couple of examples. The first one says, the heights of a large group of men are distributed normally with mean 70 inches and standard deviation 2.5 inches. To find the z value, I'm going to use this formula that you can see right at the top. We're going to substitute the x value in for the data value, 74, minus the mean was given to be 70 divided by the standard deviation is 2.5. We have a z-score of 1.6, so that means that the score of 74 inches is 1.6 standard deviations above the mean. Well, let's do some backwardsing. If I have a data value that is 1.5 standard deviations below the mean, that's a z-value of negative 1.5. What is that data value? So I'm going to use my x equals formula for that one. I have my z-value of negative 1.5 times my standard deviation was 2.5 plus my mean was 70. So I'm going to go negative 1.5 standard deviations times the standard deviation 
Let's add the mean on to that. And my data value is 66.25. So 66.25 is exactly one and a half standard deviations below the mean. Jackson is training for the 100 meter race. His coach has timed his last 10 runs and found a mean of 14, sorry, 11.47 seconds with a standard deviation of 0.28 seconds. Find the 95% confidence interval. So I have my mean in here. I have my standard deviation in here. I have my number of practices in here. And because I'm looking for the 95% confidence interval, that means Z will be two. So I can sub all these values into my formula and then be able to say I am 95% sure that on race day Jackson will run between blank and blank seconds. So let's start with the mean, 11.47 plus and minus the Z score times the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of practices. So on my calculator I'm going to type this once with a plus and once with a minus. Um, was it 2? Times 0.28 divided by the square root of 10. So I believe his low value will be 11.30. 29. I thought there was another 9 after that. And if I use my calculator savvy, I don't really have to retype this, just use my arrow keys to change that plus sign right there. And I have 11.65. So I am 95% sure that on race day, Jackson will run between 11.29 seconds and 11.65 seconds. If I want to do the exact same math, but I want to be 99% sure of what his final score will be, I'm going to just swap out the Z value for 2.5. Seven six. So I'll rewrite it: eleven point forty-seven plus or minus two point five seventy-six times point twenty-eight divided by root ten. Um, let's see if I can do this. Point five seven six. So I have 11.70, if we round that, and then I need my minus answer, 11.24. So as we increase the confidence, we actually also increase our interval, but that's it for the notes here. Good luck on the exercises, and please let me know if you have questions.